Hey everyone, we want to welcome Larry Law to the podcast today. And last week we were able to hear, hear from his wife, Angie. Angie was on talking to us about glycobiology. And now we have her husband on who is more of the science base of what glycobiology is. And he is here to explain to us what it is and how it can benefit in our life. So she basically kind of shared her story yes. of yeah. how this all came about. And then now we want to go through with you, what is glycobiology? Because that's what we still don't know in that aspect. And she said, you're the science guy, but it all came about because of her health issues, right? That's correct. Um, that was the motivation to even go into it because I had no background. I love sciences, but I had never heard anything about glycobiology. I didn't even know it existed. So as I started to study, she had read something about these sugars and we had cut sugar out of her diet for over two years. She couldn't eat any sugar. And so when she saw something about good sugars, um, she gave me the paper and I kind of poo-pooed it at first and, and uh, because I had never heard anything about it, how can I not know anything about this science if it's legit? But um, as soon as I got over my arrogance, it's um, uh, impressive of what I found. And so I just started a journey into this particular science and I started looking at what these sugars were about. And it turns out that there are good sugars. Uh, we are kind of raised to think of uh, sugars being bad for us. And when we eat so much uh, high fructose corn syrup and so much glucose in our diet, of course, it's not good. But I learned about these eight sugars. <clears throat> it turned out there are eight sugars that coat the cells in our body. And um, these cells have these antennas. Um, and you may have heard it with, with COVID, people have heard about spike proteins and things like that. Yeah. Well, a spike protein is a glycoprotein. So it's a protein made up of amino acids, but on uh, the ends of it, um, covering it um, are sugars. And they're covered with uh, only eight sugars, but there can be hundreds and thousands of them. And they're way more complicated than the amino acids, which can only link together in a chain, kind of like train cars. And they link linearly. And so that you build this kind of like a flagpole. And, uh, but the sugars on the flagpole are the flag and they could represent all these different countries. And so you can have a protein, but depending on the flag made up of sugars, um, the protein will be recognized in very different ways, just as these countries are represented by different flags. And the only thing that's changed are the sugars. So let me, let me ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? So you know, I'm, and, I, and I'm going basic, basic, um, you know, physiology. Yeah. But you have on the outside of the cell, you have like the lipid bilayer. So are these yep. sugars inside the lipid bilayer or are they another layer on top of that? Or how does that work? Great question. Great question. Um, the proteins um, and lipid structures will go through that lipid um, bilayer. So that's the cell membrane. Um, and okay. so the cell membrane is made up of that bilipid la layer. And so proteins will go through like, like an antenna. Um, and they will be put on the surface, uh, so they'll extend inside the cell, but through the membrane and then outside the cell, and it will be waving like a flagpole and a flag. Okay. And those are the glycoproteins. They can be made of proteins or they can make, be made of lipids also, glycolipids. But, but it's different than like a hormone receptor thing like that, right? It's, it's a different, different kind of concept. Well, no, they are the receptors. So they okay. are insulin receptors. They, they have lots of names. So in the medical literature, they call them antigens, um, you know, uh, emphasizing the negative aspect of what they can sometimes do, but they are receptors. Uh, okay. So cell receptors is another word for them. Okay. So these are glycoproteins. These are those antennas and your cells are covered kind of like uh, a guy with a, a beard. Um, the whiskers of his beard are these individual glycoproteins or cell receptors. And each one uh, is different. They're, they target, they have different flags. And so, for example, an insulin receptor is looking for insulin to be right. sent out so that when you eat, the pancreas generates insulin and it comes out and docks on an insulin receptor. 
So yeah. and what all happens, hormones and everything like that have receptors, so the cell can get the get what is needed. Ex exactly. So, so in the body, if I understand you correctly, and I'm sorry to cut you off, I didn't mean to do that. A receptor and these glycoproteins, they're the same thing. Yes. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I can. They're, I might be able to have a little conversation then with you. <laughs> oh yes. So these receptors, uh, and they do lots of functions. So they don't function just as receptors, but but the, all receptors are made out of these um, proteins or lipids and these sugars. Okay. And people don't talk so much about the sugars. No, I because yeah. they don't know about them. Yeah, they emphasize the spike protein, for example. But it's not the spike protein. It's not the protein part that we're worried about. It's actually the sugars is where the virus attaches to the sugars. And the viruses are covered with these sugars and bacteria are covered with these sugars. In fact, every living uh, entity in the universe is covered with these sugars. And if you don't have those sugars covering you, you're dead. Um, so one of the interesting things that I like, um, when I was studying cell biology, I knew that the nucleus of the cell was very important. You know, that's where the, the DNA is stored and the genes are stored. Um, and I thought, wow, um, but I learned that you can actually take the nucleus out of a cell and the cell can live for months. Right. It won't be able to reproduce. It won't be able to repair in any significant way, but it will live. But if you disrupt any of the sugars on the outside of the cell membrane called the glycocalyx um, is what they call it. But if you disrupt any of those sugars, the cell dies today. It turns out that the operating system for the cell is not internal in the nucleus. That's just the blueprints for the cell. But what the, the, the operating system is actually on the outside of the cell, uh, the membrane, uh, the brain of the cell is actually on the membrane. And that's what allows the cell to interface with the outside world. So hormones like insulin come and dock right. and they dock correctly, then, the, then, then that antenna responds, a message is sent down the antenna into the inside of the cell, and the cell then opens up the floodgates for glucose and allows glucose to come in. But if the flag is not correct and the, the hormone comes and tries to attach, to bind to the flag, um, and it's missing some sugars or it's just not the right flag, mm -hmm. it won't be able to attach. If you have too many of those, you'll eventually become insulin resistant, and right. that's type 2 diabetes. And so it turns out that these sugars, if they're not present correctly on all of those different hormones and other identification antennas, if they're not there, that undergirds every single disease. So all degenerative disease like cancer, um, all autoimmune disease, um, that's why the body starts to attack you is because sugars are missing on specific uh, antennas on those cells and the body cannot identify you anymore and so it attacks you. And so that's autoimmune, but it's all triggered by these sugars. So there are eight sugars. It seems like there's not very many, um, but there are eight unique sugars. And we used to get it in our diet, but we don't, we process these sugars out because of the paradigm that we we get plenty of sugar and sugar is just used for energy production. And we think of it as glucose and um, of course, glucose and making ATP energy packets within the mitochondria are all important functions. And if you can't make energy, the cell can't live, but that process, uh, the Krebs cycle and all of that is not the only process going on in the cell. The creation of these antennas on the outside of the cell are, are so vitally important because your cell cannot operate correctly if those sh sugars are not uh, affixed to the proteins and lipids out there on the cell membrane. Things cannot connect, they can't interact. Right. The immune system cells come by and they try to read who you are. They try to read a particular glycoprotein. They read some of these sugars. If they can't read that sugar because you're not spelling it correctly, you're not saying I'm Larry's um, liver cell. You say I'm Harry's liver cell or Jack or something worse. At some point, the immune system is going to say, uh, I don't like what you're telling me. And instead of letting you be, it's going to attack you as being foreign. And so that's why these sugars are so critical. And I'll give an example. 
um, that I think everybody will understand has to do with blood. Um, and pretty much everybody knows there's four blood types. There's type A and type B and type O. And then this about 4% of the population has AB, which is a combination of A and B. Um, but what people don't um, necessarily understand is that every single red blood cell is covered with these sh sugars. Um, they're glycolipids on red blood cells, but they're covered with these antennas. And the flags on those um, structures on the flagpole are made up of uh, five sugars generally, type A and type B are. And so the sugars are ordered in a particular sequence. The sequence matters. Uh, the orientation matters. Um, and so um, type A and type B, if you look at their antennas, there's no difference between them except for one sugar. So oh, wow. one sugar is different between type A and type B. Uh, one is a galactose molecule and the other one is a, an acetogalactosamine. And what and so just happened, that one sugar makes the difference between an A and a B, which is which is a huge difference. Which is life and death, because if you get, if I, I'm type B, if I had type A transfused into my body, my body's, my immune system's gonna say, uh, that's wrong, right. and it's gonna attack every single uh, red, red blood cell, it will attack and destroy them. And so if I have been transfused very much of that, then I will start to suffocate internally, and death is, if it's not corrected, death is the final outcome of that process. So that got my attention when I was uh, studying is like, does the body pay any attention to these sugars? Oh my word, the body pays close attention to the very details of these sugars. And that's what I discovered, but that was the thing that kind of unlocked the door for me is that the only difference between type A and type B is one sugar. Everything else is exactly the same. And so, as I began looking into it, it turned out that these sugars do a lot of things, but how they function and how they guide our immune system is uh, definitely critical. Uh, by the way, 50% uh, of the population is type O. That's the most common blood type. Type O um, only has four sugars. It doesn't have the fifth sugar. It doesn't have the fifth offending sugar or the antigen, as the medical community would call it. And so type O can actually, um, their blood can be, uh, yes, to anybody can receive type O because they don't have that fifth sugar that could be different. And type it's that a and fifth sugar B. that says whether they're A or B. So O exactly. just four, the other two have yes. a fifth, and they're just a different fifth. Exactly. Okay. And AB has both the A and the B, so they don't care. They're good with, with anybody's blood. They're called the universal receiver. But type O can get anybody's blood, and that's the reason is because they don't have it. And now the what's interesting is the body could care. It could have been designed to care that the, that sugar is missing, but it doesn't care. It doesn't care that it's not there. It just doesn't want to see the wrong sugar sitting in that fifth spot. And so that's why it works. And so when we understood that, um, that was a huge difference. So these sugars, and I'll, let me name them, um, there's eight of them. Um, and most people know glucose, that's very common. That's one of the eight. Uh, galactose, which lots of times comes from dairy, but it comes from other things like celery and other, other food groups, not just dairy. Um, but galactose, people have heard of. But the other six, generally people have not heard of. And those sugars are called mannose, which is a, a huge sugar. Mannose, uh, fucose, not fructose, not fruit sugar, uh, another sugar called fucose. Um, xylose is another sugar, uh, N acetylglactosamine, N acetylglucosamine, and N acetylnerminic acid, which some of this stuff doesn't even sound like a sugar. It sounds like you wouldn't even want to eat it. Sounds but, like um, acid, kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, acid? Oh, I don't want that. But those sugars are actually vital because. Those are the things that create um, mucus in your epithelial cells, in your uh, respiratory tract. So those are the, the, the mucosal lining. Um, so that's where the virus comes in and they attach to the sugars. And so the sugars need to be correct so that um, your immune system will function properly. They also, another thing that they do is within capillaries and arteries, 
they are in the surface of the lumen, so the interior of the artery. Um, so when things go wrong there and you get inflammation, um, lots of times what happens is those, those antennas are uh, standing out from the interior and the blood kind of goes uh, through riding on those antennas. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but it rides on that surface so that the blood is not hitting the, the, the outer lining of the, the artery because that friction uh, will damage the artery. And so the design is for it to rest on top of these um, whiskery antennas and it rides along that and it flows much faster. When they get damaged though, then, and you don't have them, then that blood will drop down to the epithelial cells and that's when you start to get damaged. So the um, sugars are vital for just thousands of different applications. So, so how did that's you get to, over you. Yeah, how did Go you ahead. get to the point that you realized that this was the problem with your wife? And then how did you know what sugars to do? Like, can, is there a test that you can do that says you're not adequate in this, this, and this sugar is, I mean, how, how do you go from, okay, now we know a little bit about this sugar stuff to if this is my problem, how do I know what it is and how to alleviate it? Right. Um, no, there wasn't any way of knowing. Um, there are some tests that are just now starting to come out. In fact, I was just reading a study on COVID. They're looking to, they can now determine based on the sugars, um, which people will get really sick and which will not. Um, so the test hasn't been developed yet, but they now have the science behind it to develop that test. And so maybe in the coming years, we'll have a good idea of the people who are actually susceptible to, to severe illness uh, response from COVID. But no, back in the day, there wasn't anything. Um, uh, and the problem was there wasn't any way to look at the sugars. We had no technology. We had technology to look at proteins. We we're really good at that, but we had none. When you look at sugar, uh, the mechanisms to, to look at protein, you know, it dissolves the sugar so you can't see it. it. It destroys the sugar molecules. There was no way for us to do it until they developed some more modern uh, technology, uh, mass spectrometry and, and other things that came aligned. But we're still so far behind because the sugars, even though there are only eight of them, they combine in ways that can create um, uh, about one quadrillion, which is a huge number, uh, different letters. So you're talking about billions and billions of different flags. And they, each one of them means something entirely different. So when they were doing the genome project in the uh, 1990s and they were thinking, okay, we, we need to find the proteins that make up humans. Um, and so they were trying to sequence them all and come up with them. And they were thinking there's probably 120,000 different right. uh, genes, yeah. But eventually they, they came down and they found that you know, humans only have about 20 to 24,000 different genes. Uh, a Heinz tomato has 37,000 right. genes. Right, yeah. We're, and they were, we're less complicated. Pilot. Yeah, we're less complicated than a Heinz tomato. So something it's was more, wrong. There's more like, genes in the gut. There's more genes, I remember, because when in, dealing with gut, you know, there's more so, genes in the bacteria yeah. and all that in the gut than there are in our cells. You know? Exactly. So the problem they eventually discovered when they discovered that is like, no, there's something wrong here. We're missing something. So we had 24,000 flagpoles, but it wasn't the flagpole that was making the difference that accounts for the difference. It was the flag that was attached. And the flag was sugar. It was made out of sugar. And that's what gives protein uh, diversity. It's what differentiates. So glycosylation, which is the putting of sugars, um, every cell will put, as it creates uh, amino acids and proteins, it will also glycosylate or put sugars to um, the majority of those proteins and lipids. And they will make structures that are unique. So it'll put out an insulin receptor, or it will put out another kind of receptor or another kind of ID. And so we have trillions and trillions of letters in this alphabet. And all of a sudden now it became clear how the immune system communicated. How did it talk? How did it know there was a problem? So 
For bacteria, uh, bacteria have these glycoproteins. We call them lectins on bacteria, but they have those antennas and they're covered with that. When you get a urinary tract infection, um, E. coli will come into the urethra, and, and so you, they'll release a, a, a toxin when um, bacteria will lots of times release toxin when they're in an unfriendly environment. Um, normally, they're good and they're 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 fine. We have E. coli in our body all the time, and it's not a problem. But when the terrain gets out of whack, and when your body is not balanced properly. Um, the bacteria are going to start to release toxins. And so a urinary tract infection, what happens is the, the, the bacteria comes in and it tries to attach to the urethra. Instead of flowing through, it'll try to attach to those surface cells, the epithelial cells. And so it's looking to attach. And it turns out that the bacteria are typically always looking for the sugar mannose. And so that's what they're looking for to attach. And if you put mannose into your diet, if you get a significant amount of that, you that's why people will eat cranberry, not the, oh. the sweet stuff. Yeah, that's, that's why it has mannose, lots of mannose. That's, that's exactly. Interesting. And that's why if you can get enough of it, um, you can actually clear out a UTI because uh, the, the lectins will see the free-floating mannose and they'll grab it and they'll all fill up. And so they have nothing left to grab you and they flow through your exactly. body. And so that's what's supposed to happen. And so if you don't have enough mannose, then they are not going to do that. And they start to glom onto you inappropriately and you are going to have issues. That's so just like, one. So like a red, so like a, this kind of a, um, you said you use a urinary tract infection. Are they yeah. now starting to figure out, okay, well, if I have this, this sugar is usually missing. If I have this, this sugar yeah. is usually is. is that how they're now starting to try to yes. use so glycobiology? Yeah. So your so your urologists uh, have learned within the last ten years that um, they will prescribe D mannose, um, um, and that's how they clear out urinary tract infections. So they um, they provide that sugar. Veterinarians have known for a long time uh, how to treat. Um, you know, different animals uh, with with various sugars um, because drugs were toxic to animals. Uh, it's only humans that can actually handle uh, robust enough to handle those well, toxic. They we, well, as they think we can, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but the sugars are how we're uh, how we were built to handle it. So, um, another example is aloe vera, which uh, lots of times people um, know aloe vera is wonderful and great, and it is, and you can put aloe vera on a cut or a burn and somehow it stimulates the immune system to respond quicker and more efficiently. And so, but we never knew what aloe vera, what, why did it work? And so they looked at it for a long time. It wasn't until the 1990s that they finally figured out it was a sugar and the sugar was mannose. So that particular sugar, just like cranberries, that sugar is what communicates to the immune system and allows the, the calling in of immune system cells to that area because the immune system is always looking kind of for that sugar mannose because typically bacteria have mannose on the ends of their lectins. And so if you have a lot of mannose, you, you, the immune system is going to come in to respond to it and see what's going on. And that's what aloe vera does is it calls the immune system because mostly the immune system is kind of like in a sleepy state. It's just kind of like there and just kind of monitoring, but not active. It's just like, kind of like, oh, kind of tired and just kind of, yeah. And then all of a sudden something comes in and you want your immune system to go, ho, oh, and you want it to go on alert and you want it to go take care of that problem. But um, in immune systems that are, don't have the, you know, these kinds of ingredients properly, then the immune system never reacts sufficiently to go take care of the problem or sometimes a situation you know when you have bad glycoproteins it can miscommunicate and 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 start pounding on a cell because it's reading that you're foreign you're not part of the body and so it starts to pound on you and it won't let go but it's because of the sugars that are either missing um, and are not being properly um, identified. And so they are critical. And that's why I wrote, eventually wrote the book is I spent um, about 40,000 hours um, just um, looking into this field that no one 
really understood pharmaceuticals were spending millions of dollars and have developed drugs that target cells, but they target them by these sugars. Um, but um, understanding what it is and that they exist in nature, that there are nutritional sugars, you won't hear that from the pharmaceutical because they're going to build synthetic um, versions. And synthetic versions are always going to have problems. Right. Um, just, for example, just like the example of D-mannose, you have to have D-mannose, not L-mannose. The orientation of these sugars are very, very important. They pay attention, the body pays attention to the geometry. So it can get really complicated quickly, but in nature, these things exist naturally, and that's how we're supposed to get them in our diet. We strip, for example, when we, when we do flour, we strip our wheat. Um, when we don't use the whole um, grain, when we, when they, and the reason they don't use the whole grain is because the, the oils that are in the endosperm and, and uh, the germ and the bran, they, they strip it away because they go rancid, you know? So your, your flour would go rancid when you grind it. It only lasts for seven to nine days. So they strip it away and they only use the endosperm. And so you can put it on a, uh, on a shelf for months because it's dead. There's nothing living in it anymore. You've removed it. Mm -hmm. now, one of the things that gets removed when you pull that out is the sugar mannose. So you, and they didn't, no one was trying to kill us. It was just that, they just you know, do you get, yeah, do you get plenty of sugar already? Is that a problem? And if you believe all sugar is the same, it's all for energy, then it's not a problem, right? But we didn't know enough at the time, and we didn't know mannose is not treated like glucose in the body. It's, it, it does different things, and the body processes it differently, and it needs mannose. And so when you remove it and you strip it away from your bread, from your flour, all of a sudden you become, you're lacking. And, um, and so the diet that we eat, our highly processed diet is stripped away, these sugars. And so your body has backup systems but these are backup systems that are that get overused. And if you're missing enzymes, you're not going to make the sugars very well. And so you're gonna to start to suffer and you're gonna to start to get symptoms. And so symptoms is the first clue that rises to the level of your attention. But it's been going on for a long time below your conscious level that your body is struggling to be able to handle what's going on. And it turns out that these sugars play that critical communication role they build structures they're not burned like glucose is burned for fuel but these these sugars are not burned they are structural sugars that build cellular antennas that are designed if they're not built properly then the immune system comes in and doesn't recognize what that structure is and hormones or whatever is supposed to come to that cell receptor if it's not built properly it won't function properly. So the structure has to be built properly for the body to function properly. And it turns out these sugars are key and it applies to bacteria. I know you've done a lot of work with uh, bacterial health, but it applies in your gut also because all of the bacteria are covered with these sugars. And if they're not covered properly, then you're not going to digest your food properly. You're not going to, you know, get that, that, fuel source that you need because the bacteria is what breaks down co complex carbohydrates into these monosaccharides. Um, so these are all simple, simple sugars, uh, monosaccharides, and um, but they are critical to have in our diet in order to allow the body to, to build these structures. And so we have like 60 trillion cells, we have 600 trillion bacteria, and viruses, um, that's even a greater number. Uh, and people don't understand that we actually have viruses in our body. And just like bacteria, um, they're good. Uh, our DNA is, if you looked at it, 8% of our DNA is viral DNA. So we are made, as we get viruses and we get things, it becomes part of us. Just like bacteria become part of us. You can't pull it out of you um, and take it away, like, you know, like people want to get antiseptics and, and remove all the bacteria, right. you'll die if you yeah. do that. So it's the same thing with viruses. Uh, they're not bad. They are good. It's only bad when things go wrong. Yeah, in your, in your body, if the terrain is not maintained properly, 
then yes, the bacteria will release toxins and they'll start to act up and, and by viruses, the same thing will we'll start to do things. So a couple of questions for you. So Larry, yeah. um, when you have like for these, you know, just normal everyday people, how would they know that they are lacking these sugars and how would they get them into their system? And how does this all work so that we can yeah. be able to benefit from your, from your research? Yeah, um, and I tried to cover that in the book because there's a lot of, of information. It get overwhelming, but just um, basically if you have a symptom going on, so the National Academy of Science wrote in 2012, they came out with a 200 page paper that said uh, a lot of things, but um, one of the things they said is um, these sugars are, are vital. Um, you know, they are essential for life. Um, they, they facilitate life um, and any disease, every disease state that exists, degenerative or autoimmune, you name it, sugars are missing from those cell surface sugar structures. And who, who, so was that one, that? who said it? That was the National Academy of Science in, in 2012, October 2012. Um, and I reference it. I, we have a, a free webinar on our website, Angie's Option GRM, that we have something called the Wellness Journey class. And um, I cover, I mention it in there just to give people a background. It's, it's about a 50 minute class. And I talk about altered food and why that's become a problem and supplementation and how to tell the difference between uh, vitamins and minerals that are plant-based and actually helpful to you versus the synthetic and inorganic ones that are manufactured. And then I talk about glycobiology, but I mentioned the National Academy of Science because um, that's vital. Your question, Liz, is that how do you know? You will know when you have a symptom. If you have a symptom, it doesn't matter what symptom you have. You could be tired. You could be whatever. Um, whatever it is, um, and it can be more full-blown. Whatever symptom you have, cancer, it doesn't matter. Whatever symptom you have, there are sugars missing from cell structures within your body. Now, you have 60 trillion cells, um, so you're talking a lot of things, but you can be uh, predisposed um, genetically for certain issues, but the sugars are what's making the difference. And if you're not, if you don't have those in place, um, then you're going to be suffering some sort of disease state. That's what they told us. That's 10 years ago. Now, how it, do you think? Correlate, is it correlated simple? Like, <clears throat> excuse me, in your book, does it say, okay, if you are having like this symptom, this is usually no. the, you know, it, so yeah, it's not no. that specific yet. Okay. Not that easy. Uh, they're too, way too complicated. We're, Thanks we are like in, kindergarten trying to understand what the letters mean, what the flags are. We, we just found out that there are flags, you know, and that these flags mean a lot. Uh, they govern the binding process, you know, like uh, viruses and, and anything, a bacteria bind, anything, hormones bind. They have, you have to have the binding. If you don't have the binding, then your cell can't right. respond. So these sugars are what does it all the time. And if they're not correct now, how do you, yeah, it's not, it's not easy, but we try to make it not too complicated either. There's eight sugars. So it's not like, you know, you gotta, you know, go eat a wheelbarrow stuff. It's like, you want to be eating the types of food that these sugars are more prevalent. Now, the problem is that in processed food, you're not gonna find them. They've been stripped out. Um, again, not intentionally because people, we weren't that smart. Um, they just stripped it to so they could have a long shelf life or, you know, um, be able to transport food farther than they were before. But we've created instead of living food, it's dead food. And that makes a difference because these sugars are, Getting are, those are, are, every day are for life. Yeah. And so there's things that you can add to your diet that can help. There are things that you can supplement um, because sometimes people are so far behind. I the was going to ask you, are there certain supplements that have like all eight of those sugars and kind of like a proper dose? Yes. Um, yeah. And we do not, we do not um, sell um, product. We don't, we don't even, um, we don't even mention it in our book. I, I talk about we're strictly for education, but if people ask us after they've seen our class, 
-hmm. and they want to know uh, things, then they can ask us. And then we we have vetted uh, different companies and different things that have products because there's a lot of junk out there. Right. Um, even aloe vera, if you were to go look for aloe vera, which is a wonderful thing, if you can grow it, it's great, but you have to be careful because the yellow part, the aloe one has a laxative effect. <laughs> That's not good either, but you know, you have to know how to do it. But when you, if you look for aloe vera and you go get these potions and lotions, none of that stuff works. It's dead. This is because they didn't know that it was the sugar mannose. If you don't harvest the plant properly uh, within the first four to six hours, it's destroyed. The sugar is destroyed by enzymatic reaction. That's why you have aloe vera this and aloe vera that, and it's all junk. It doesn't work. But the live plant, you put that, um, um, that, that plant, um, you know, that jelly structure on your wound oh that does work and if you get that into your body oh my goodness there's going to be a response there but that's the difference between living and dead stuff and so lots of people sell things that are not efficacious so we will vet, we vet that's part of the, our services we vet looking for uh, people who do it right and we can make recommendations if people ask we are not we don't have anything about companies in the book. We don't have companies or anything on our website. We are strictly educational because actually it's illegal to talk about anything uh, natural, um, treating, curing, or mitigating disease. So we don't, we stay completely away of it, uh, from it. But there are things that you can eat that will benefit and bless your life. And I mentioned those things, um, but there's no checklist. There's no recipe. Um, it's more of a kind of a smorgasbord. You just want to make sure you're getting enough in that you get above the disease state. Because if you don't get above the disease state, the disease will win. Um, so there's an amount you've got to get in and you've got to be consistent because cells are replicating and reproducing every day. Uh, all, all red blood cells within your body will replace within four months. So it's like you get an oil change every four months. If you don't have the proper nutrition in your body, when, when the body goes to make those red blood cells, it may not make them correct. There may be some deficiency, some here, some aging, some whatever is not correct. At some point down the line, as you continue to make that, it's going to become a problem. And so they won't function properly and they'll cause other problems and there'll be other side effects. So these things are, are vitally important. And that's the same with bacteria. In your gut, you, they need to be glycosylated properly so that they can do the job they were built to do so that you can have a healthy gut and that you don't damage the lining within your gut um, because those are sugars too that are looking for uh, what the bacteria is releasing um, and processing through as food. So um, it's a amazing, um, I just, uh, that's kind of like the, the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton more that we could talk about. I could talk about breast milk and why breast milk is so um, much better than any other source of milk, um, mother's breast milk. Um, and it turns out to be these sugars again uh, are key. Uh, why red meat is um, cancer causing. What is it about red meat? And I, it turns out to be the sugar again um, yeah, the difference between the human version uh, of a, a particular sugar and the animal version. And the whole thing is fascinating. So I do have those kinds of things in the book and we teach classes and we uh, have webinars and we do a monthly webinar every, um, uh, well, monthly webinar, I guess it's <laughs> monthly. Um, but anyway. So um, let's, yeah. let's kind of finish up with just a little bit. So so what is the yeah. name of the book? It's like the, uh, the book. There's an elephant in the room exposing hidden truths in the science of health. And okay. we, we, the main thing is glycobiology. That's the main chapter. But we took, talk about altered food. Um, we talk about synthetic and inorganic vitamins and minerals, how to tell the difference. Glycobiology, a huge section. And then uh, another section in the back that talks about things like cholesterol. So in this work, I found, you know, things... <laughs> So we're trying to expose hidden truths, um, things like the calcium lie, 
how, uh, why you need magnesium in your body, um, why that's one of the main mi minerals and, and this whole effort to calcify everybody <clears throat> in processed food is so bad. And what happens when you, when you calcify, uh, over calcify people? Calcium is a vital nutrient. Cholesterol, why you actually want high cholesterol and not low cholesterol and <clears throat> how the studies, I quote the studies and I show in the studies how they, sh they, they testify that high cholesterol is what you want. But by the time you get to the back end where they summarize it and wrap it up, they twist it into the opposite. Yeah. Now, I taught graduate statistics, undergraduate and graduate statistics for uh, a number of years for several universities. And so I know how the games are played. I know how to read the statistical studies. So what I've done is I try to share that information because uh, people yeah, it is. like, it's, oh, it's totally misleading. And right now with everything, no totally. one knows what to believe, because if you look yeah. at the studies on all the this whole pandemic, it's like, yeah. that's not what it says, but they're telling us right. this because they're just totally switching everything around. So it's very difficult. Exactly. And I, I talk about vaccines in, in the book also. This was before COVID. The book was written in 2017, but we have blog posts and I talk about the COVID, um, you know, and the games that they play with absolute risk versus relative risk and how they can make the vaccine sound like it's 100 percent effective when actually it's like less than one percent right and, and that's what they did that's exactly what they did with this vaccine yeah. well and how they don't uh, test it with a, a true placebo they test it with uh, another vaccinated group so that the 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 they already the have the crack in them yeah so it won't look as bad as if yeah. you tested it with the, you know, the real thing. So um, there's all these games that people play in the, with numbers and you think that numbers would not be, you know, that they would be solid, but statistics is not that way. So liars figure and figures lie. And so they do all kinds of things. So I try to bring it back. <laughs> That's a good yeah. quote. That's a great yeah. quote. So what is the website that people can go to that they can, if they want to go to your monthly um, webinar, yeah. or if they want to learn a little bit more? So it's Angie's Option um, GRM uh, for Grassroots Movement. So Angie's Option GRM dot org. Um, okay. And um, they can find the blog is there. Uh, the articles are there. Uh, they can sign up for our weekly e-zine, which is um, free, of course, to the public and podcasts that um, we put out and and just lots of different resources. And they can see the wellness journey class, which is will give you an overview of what I've just tried to share here in this short period of time. Um, you can watch it and people can see it and go, okay, I, I get it. Cause it is not glycobiology just by the name is like, uh, off putting because it's like, wow, it can get really technical, really fast. Right. You can go um, down some rabbit holes and no way to get out of it. Yeah, exactly. And you can get snowed real fast. And so I try to, um, uh, give the information that the public can, can ascertain and it can make sense. And it's like, okay, I get it. It's not really complicated when you look at it nutritionally. It's like- And the book you can get on Amazon, right? The book is available on Amazon. It's also available on our website. So either way, international, we encourage people to get it through Amazon because they can ship it a lot cheaper than we can. Um, okay. So yeah. So Larry, you are more blessed because you're gonna be able to be at our conference um april 22nd and 23rd and you're going to be speaking at it you're going to have I a look forward to that. yeah you're going to have a you'll have a booth so people are going to be able to come and ask questions i'm assuming yeah. you'll probably have the book there that you can yeah we'll bring some books there you bet so they, can, they can get them from you as well so yeah well yeah. it was a pleasure being able to speak to you i know that there's so much more that we could talk about <laughs> and maybe we could do another podcast another time but um, thank you for being on today and be able to just teach us something that we never really knew about before. Hopefully it's well, been thank you for, uh, for the work that you're doing for the conference uh, to uh, bless people's lives and get these kinds of information out to people because truly the information can make a world difference in people's health. There is actually hope for people um, and it's not overly complicated. It's just have to know what are the things that you need to have in your diet that will actually help sustain life. And so thank you for uh, allowing me to be on with you. Ah, you're very welcome. Appreciate you being on. Thanks very much. Alrighty, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.